course you can call me daddy. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, you can find me at james.desbra, Postmortem Studios, all one word, JD Writer, and JGD Games. Horror films, by and large, they're the least satisfying of the various media in which you can experience horror for me because so much of it is just cheap <laughs> um, a lot of film students people take take horror as being something quick and easy and low budget you know if you need to you can just have a slasher you, know, you can get a mask from a from a halloween store or, or whatever and you know that's that's enough you can make something slightly scary and you can always just pump it full of jump scares and, and nonsense like that and lately of course a lot has been found footage ever since Blair Witch Project it's not new anymore it's not cool it's not clever <laughs> not anymore it's tired it was tired in literature back when that was the case when a lot of science fiction and horror you know in the 19th century century was was written as being stuff that was found footage to lend it a sense of authenticity and so on uh, the early Gurian novels do that. The the Barsim novels do that for a while until they drop the pretense, and so and so it goes. Found footage not so fun, but, and movies, yeah, they're just disappointing. They don't spend enough time. They don't have enough time to really build up that sense of dread, which means a lot of the time they're they're pushing those disgust and boo buttons a lot, and it's just not that good <laughs> at least for, at least for me now there's certain classic horror films that, that break that mold everyone's going to tell you about those this season they're going to talk about the thing or in the mouth of madness or texas chainsaw massacre they're going to do retrospectives and all of those kind of movies and there's a lot that gets passed by some of it modern some of it older that's worthwhile so this isn't like a the best of or the movies that I necessarily think are the, the absolute pinnacle of horror. These are ones that I think have been, in some cases, but not all, overlooked. A couple that are just that good. Or films that have redeeming qualities that elevate them above all the rest of the dross which is constantly being churned out on Netflix. Right, many of the best horror films, horror episodes, even many of the best Doctor Who episodes, but by no means all, are effective because they subvert something comfortable, something that you're normally okay with, something that you understand and you take for granted. And your parents is generally one of those things. Sorry for those of you where that's not the case, but your parents, your family, your home, all of that is usually thought of as somewhere safe and secure, somewhere where you can go almost to hide from the outside world people who will take your side or whatever the 1989 film parents subverts that by making the parents the the baddies of the film but it's again it's slow it has that build up it takes its time it's all done through implication and it's very uneasy it makes you feel <laughs> very uneasy and part of the effectiveness of that is also what's led to a lot of criticism of the film of the film it's it's not exactly satire it's not exactly comedy it's not exactly horror and because it never really settles on any one of those things that helps create that sense of, of unease and surreality. Now it's set in the 50s. The 50s over here in the UK were very different to what they were in the US and that whole 1950s suburbia thing always carries that sense of horror for me because American films, American television and so on is constantly subverting that white picket fence suburbia thing and because I never experienced the real thing or was never exposed to the real thing my view of 1950s america is very much through this kind of horror b-movie science fiction and so on filter things like uh, fido which is a great movie as well uh, with billy Connolly as a as a zombie in a kind of 1950s post-apocalyptic america where they've kind of come to terms with having zombies around but this much more subversive even for me for whom 1950s mean america means horror 
and in many ways I guess it meant <laughs> horror for the people who lived through it as well but here it was all grinding poverty, poverty and, and ration books so yeah but well worth a look I think it's underrated and it tends to get overlooked when people look back at late 80s early 90s horror but I think it's well worth a chance cold skin two words cold skin this film massively frustrated me and yet it's still on this list <laughs> so whether that says anything I, I don't know I should have absolutely loved it right the Lovecraftian influence it, it's obvious it's very character centered it's shot beautifully the effects are pretty good all the rest of it somehow this this film completely passed me by I hadn't even heard of it until it popped up on Netflix at some point amongst all the other shit <laughs> that I end up not watching an island a remote island the predictable kind of thing that if you're a Lovecraft fan you might come to expect lurking in the sea uh, but then there's a twist at the end which was disappointing as well <laughs> so my problem with the film is twofold firstly it shoots its bolt far too soon so it is the premature ejaculation of films the, the pacing and so on is building up you're getting this idea of implied threat and all the rest of it and then it just it just comes in and reveals itself way too quickly way 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 too quickly could have done with with more build up before the end and then the twist is very predictable for the for the day and age that we live in you can see it coming well not a full mile off but maybe a half mile off and I would have liked it if there had been a double twist so if things had seemed to go one way and gone you know almost fully to that to that extent on one side and then had switched I would have liked the twist to be a I know this is vague but I don't want to spoil it for you but visually and that and that first half hour 45 minutes of, of the film perhaps maybe even less 20 minutes 20 to 30 minutes is fantastic and I was sold I was into the film right and then it just too much all at once but in spite of all that I think it's worth watching it disappointed me because it showed so much promise and that's something that I think should be rewarded the void it's gotten tons of, of, of plaudits people love it people say you know it's harkening back to Carpenter and Cronenberg and all the rest of it and and they're right it's a weird surreal body horror you know going back to physical effects thing and it's it's masterful for a relatively low budget film uh, it, it's fantastic I have no real reservations other than you know, bits of it are incoherent but that just helps the overall feel of it and it's the one on this list that I, I guess is one that hasn't passed people by if you're a horror fan you know about the void but it really is that good so make sure you see it there was a spate of kind of World War two horror films and this is one of them Frankenstein's army it's not a great film it's not even a particularly good <laughs> film I suppose but it hit a lot of buttons that I have that, that I particularly like I like Soviet troops going up against monsters rather than more typically you know they'll do the moral ambiguity of Nazi troops going going up against monsters or you know the full-on black and white allied troops against monsters which are controlled by the Nazis or zombie soldiers or whatever else this one eh, not so much <laughs> so this Soviet unit stumbles upon this research base research lab where basically uh, uh, Dr. Frankenstein is doing all kinds of experiments uh, with people and dead tissue and mechanisms and so on to create soldiers and it goes about as well for the for the Soviet soldiers as as you'd expect the plot's predictable yeah it's it's not fantastic in any particular way but the visual effects and the way that they've gone about distorting the human body and creating all these variations is really good and it's that that makes this film worth watching and worth rewarding uh, a devotion to contortionism and 
uh, physical effects, or all of that kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's good enough, right? It's good enough for a guilty pleasure, or just some something fun to watch, or yeah, if you've just gotten through playing Wolfenstein or something, and you want something vaguely along those lines, or you, you want a slightly different spin by going with with Soviet soldiers, and um, yeah, there's there's a lot of horror still that's coming out based around World War Two or the aftermath or whatever else. There's uh, one with kids holed up in an, in a makeshift orphanage under siege by by dogs uh, that's coming out, which looks particularly brutal. Can't remember what it's called for the life of me right now. But this is, it, yeah, physical effects, great contortionism, great puppetry, and it, yeah, a good enough story to carry that. If it's the visual effects and the bodily distortions are things that you like in horror, like the thing for example or the void which we just covered then yeah worth a quick rent or a, or a free watch on whatever streaming service you have are we bored of zombies yet it seems like anyone with a handy cam a couple of mates and a bottle of ketchup thinks they can do a zombie film these days and we are flooded with shit ones and it, it takes something really special to kind of grab anyone's notice when it comes to zombies anymore. I'm, st I'm even starting to find it hard to watch The Walking Dead because it's just... it's too much. And there's so much dross out there and Walking Dead can be a bit more hit and miss lately in terms of its episodes. And I think they would have done better actually to follow the comic a bit more which I find far more engaging. But still there are good zombie films that are getting lost in the mix. And most of them aren't necessarily doing anything particularly different uh, but just some of them are well executed genuine zombie stories rather than just cheap zombie exploitation is that a thing that's a thing now zombie exploitation folks is now a thing so mote it be but the girl with all the gifts is a bit different and it kind of got lost in the mix i think not enough people paid attention to it Eh, some of it harks to The Last of Us and so on. A lot of it otherwise is fairly familiar. It's running zombies that a lot of people don't like. They're not really zombies, they're infected. But what The Girl With All The Gifts has that a lot of zombie films and so on don't really have is a sense of humanity and a sense of hope. That may not be what you want from a zombie flick. You may want it to be unrelentingly dark and there to be no way to escape and for it to be about the humans turning on each other like it usually is. But this gives you something a bit different and that, and that hope for the future, that possibility for the future. And it ends on that slightly up note where most zombie films, traditionally Romero ones for example, end on that down note. And it's different enough that I think it it saves the film from all the mediocrity that it, it exists so much, and it's been unfairly judged as part of that zombie boom. So, again, if you've got it for free on a streaming service or something, it's worth a go, I think. Machinations of the Space Princess is an old-school RPG with a sci-fi setting. The rules are familiar and at once innovative. Opened up so you can play literally any alien species you can envision. Purchase it at RPG Now or Lulu.com. Subconscious. You say it. You even think it. Yeah, I have it. 